The first of the five forces we will examine is the threat of new entrants. When do you think new entrants will be tempted to move into an industry? Usually, this happens when the companies currently operating in the industry are doing well. Profits are like a magnet. The more money you make, the more people will look at what you're doing and ask themselves if they can do the same thing and profit from it too, right? It's the same with companies. The higher the profits of the firms operating in an industry, the bigger the incentive for new entrants. They want a piece of the pie and will be willing to join and compete to get it. This is a threat for firms currently competing in the market, as it means they will have to compete with a new player, which will likely steal some of their current and future clients. And, if the number of new entrants is too high, they may lose substantial business and produce losses. In this context, it becomes critical for companies to assess the threat of new entrants and, if possible, try to come up with mechanisms that would prevent the entry of new competitors. There are several ways to create such barriers to entry, and here we'll examine a few of them, mostly the ones that are legal. First, the companies in an industry can have different cost advantages. They may have low-cost sources of raw materials, government subsidies, or less expensive localized resources, such as the case with Saudi Aramco, which has access to the biggest and most accessible oil reserves in the world. The close relationship with the government of Saudi Arabia gives the company an absolute cost advantage over competitors like BP and ExxonMobil. Another barrier to entry related to costs is the achievement of economies of scale, which represent a proportionate saving in costs gained by an increased level of production. Industries with large-scale operations may have high capital outlay or be R&D intensive. In such situations, new entrants may face high unitary costs if they operate on a small scale. Imagine that a telecom must invest $50 million in its network before selling services to its clients. Existing firms have tens of thousands of clients, but new entrants must start from zero, and even then, the $50 million investment would be required. This is a significant barrier to entry, isn't it? Very few investors would put in $50 million, knowing they will have to sustain some additional losses before they acquire a critical number of clients that allows them to break even. Product differentiation is very difficult to achieve, but when a company creates a product perceived as differentiated by its clients, the company can be much more relaxed about the entry of new competitors, even if barriers to entry are low. A typical example of this is Coca-Cola. The entry barrier for the beverage industry is relatively low, but few new entrants can compete with the company. Coca-Cola can retain its market share because of its high brand recognition and because clients prefer its products. Another obstacle for new entrants could be the access to channels of distribution or the lack of them. Not all companies that produce detergents can place their products on supermarket shelves. P&G can do so because it has an extensive product portfolio and invests billions in advertising all over the world. It will be very difficult to convince supermarket chains to replace P&G's products with a new product that is unknown to customers. Actually, that is one way the Internet has transformed so many industries. It allows new businesses to overcome the established barriers to distribution and sell their products online. In certain situations, government policies could be another effective barrier to entry. Such is the case with the telecommunication industry in many countries, where new entrants need a license from public authorities and the number of telecom operators is regulated. And last but not least, the expected retaliation the current industry companies will have can be an impediment to entry. If new entrants believe that, after they start operating in the industry, existing players will increase their investments in advertising and will offer amazing promotions to customers to keep them, they are much less likely to enter the industry. All of these are valid tactics that can help protect the companies in an industry from the threat of new entrants. Often, it is much more efficient to create these barriers before a competitor joins the industry, rather than competing for market share afterwards.